Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Uh, welcome to My Vedic Roots and Zivanza webinar on uh, yoga and fertility. Uh, just to give you a little bit of a background on My Vedic Roots, My Vedic Roots was uh, founded by three partners and uh, we are based in three different countries across the world. We are in the US, in Dubai, as well as in India. And our goal is to connect Indians living abroad with their Vedic roots. Now, how we do that is through yoga, through vastu, through pujas, uh, through astrology, and through education. Now, Vedas are ancient Indian traditions consisting of Rig Veda, hymns about their um, about you know who we are, where did all originate from, um, and we want to make sure that that knowledge is passed on to the next generations. I would like to now talk about uh, why we are here today and who are here, we are here with. So we are here with um, Sunita, our yoga expert. Now, she was actually a software developer and she spent over six years with some of the largest global corporation. Sunita, do you mind uh, putting your video on for us, please? Um, so she understands the challenges and stresses of modern day lifestyle. Let me just introduce Sunita quickly. Um, to, today, Sunita is able to reach thousands of practitioners through her content on leading fitness platforms and mainstream publications, um, and also, of course, on social media. She's personally taught about hundreds of students, and they, these students come from across the world, and one of them is me as well, um, in her classes and workshops. Uh, she teaches Hatha yoga, uh, she teaches prenatal yoga, postnatal yoga, and even pregnancy yoga. So she's not there just for one problem. She can take you from starting point to make sure that you lead a healthy lifestyle, even in your old age. Um, she also studies, so it's not just her passion yoga. She's also uh, an expert on Ayurveda, on the yogic philosophy, and she also teaches uh, yoga teachers to become yoga teachers. So her teaching style combines uh, strength, mobility, flexibility, stability, breathing uh, practices, and mindfulness techniques for a complete mind-body reset. So with that, let's all welcome Sunita. Namaste. Thank you, Ekta. Thank you for my introduction. <laughs> Namaste, everyone. I'm Sunita, as Ekta said. I'm from India and a certified Hatha Yoga instructor 200 hours and also certified internationally with prenatal, postnatal and active birthing and specially specialized on fertility yoga. So I'm here today to discuss how yoga and fertility can go in hand in hand. So there is no direct researchers to say like uh, how yoga can definitely work on fertility and definitely you're going to conceive. There's no direct research to be very honest with y'all, but definitely it can make wonders. It works magically, but it's how it works is see the main things which, uh, which works in the fertility is the hormones. That's a key thing. Key one is the hormones. And as the hormones are fluctuating because of the stress and too much of tension, work pressure, and so many things, and we need to regularize these hormones, we have to balance it without any hormonal pill, basically. And how can we do this naturally without going through a hormonal pill? That is through by relaxing, by relaxation. But relaxation, which is not just easy to say, just get relaxed and you'll be, you'll be done. It's very hard to even relax as well. And that can be done in a very trained, authentic way of practicing yoga and the breathing practices. Not just the asanas, we, con we should concentrate in the pranayama practice, the mindfulness, the awareness that we need in the mind and the body and breath connection. So all this is together put up, definitely our stress will release out and you can uh, regularize the hormones, you feel better, you get confident. And once everything gets into a positive, definitely your fertility, also you get more positive about the, uh, about the fertility uh, treatments you're going through. So this is how the yoga helps. And, and apart from this, it can be also like being done on a regular basis. It, though you may be like doing it like once in a while, but I have to say you that 
if doctors uh, like say you that you have to be on a bed rest and you should not do with any physical exercise or anything, but still yoga can help you to do very restorative kind of practices, though you would not be recommended to do with any high intensity workouts or any kind of even walking as such in certain cases of fertility issues. But yoga still can be done by very much of lying down postures, which is restorative poses, which I'll show you how that can be done. And in the case of C, one of, one of the reason is for fertility issues is the PCOS. Where is that we need to have that intensity in the intensity in the yogasana practices and a little bit of uh, the, we need to get that mind body connection and we have to sweat out little even that is possible by the yoga practice. So however you want to however you want to lead through the phases of your uh, cycle, we have we can tune into the practice of the yoga and that is the major advantage. So if you're going through any other particular practice, it's just the same thing every day. It's a routine. But in yoga, you can tune in as per that day's requirement. If you can go for a restorative practice, you can make it like a little bit of intensity to work on the strength and a little bit of cardio movements. And also you can actually calm down when the days when you require or just go with a very slow, gentle stretches. Even that works great. So all this is a mix. So you have to trial and error which works good for you on which days. So the different phases in your cycle in a month and how you have to work together. That's how a prenatal or a postnatal instructor along with a doctors, how we work combinedly together for the fertility issues. Okay, so apart from this, I'll show you just like a very basic, very basic uh, poses, a few of the restorative yoga poses, and a few of the other poses which is to be done to release out the issues of the fertility. Okay, all you need to have is a yoga mat, and you don't require really much time to do it. Even with, when you can have like five, 10 minutes, definitely you can do it. See, very simple stretches is what we can start. So first one is a Paschimottasana. That is a forward fold. So here you'll be just stretching your leg forward and you're gonna bend your knee slightly so that you're not gonna curve your spine. There's no point in rounding the spine and folding forward down, okay? There'll be too much of arc of the spine and your abdominal organs are literally getting crunched. It is not getting massaged. So you have to lift your spine, elevate your spine and slowly inhale, lift your arms up and exhale, lengthen your spine upwards and exhale as you fold forward and bend forward down. You can just stay here for five breaths or 10 breaths or however long, like one minute also you can stay here. So the main idea of doing this pose for the fertility is, as you can observe here, my heart is lower towards the spine. In, generally, when you're sitting or you're standing, your heart is not lower down towards the spine. So but only when you're bending forward, your heart comes to a lower position of your spine. This is when your mind gets relaxed and helps to release out the tension and the stress and the good generation of the hormones it helps to produce. So this is one of the poses. And again, there are a few of the poses like where you can do with Malasana, I just show you. Just a deep squat, Malasana. And just taking your arms and separating your hips wider with your elbows. This is Malasana position. Again, if this is harder, we have different variations to do it as per the individual body types. You can take a yoga block like this and sit on a yoga block, basically. So another best part of yoga is like we have different modifications, variations, which we can customize as per individual body types. So you don't have to, everybody don't have to do the same thing in a similar way. We're going to tune it as per your body type. Again, here, this is very good for your pelvic region. So you a very good um, oxygenated blood flows throughout your pelvic organs and it helps to release out any kind of back pain you have, uh, especially if you get any kind of back pain during your menstrual cycle, it helps to release out the pain very, very naturally here. Again, here, this can be done any time in a day and it can be done like 10 breaths or even for two minutes, three minutes, you can do it. This is Malasana, which is called as a garland pose. Okay, this is one of the poses. And there are other few more poses I'll just show you. One other one is the Adomuka. So just place your palms and knees on the floor and tuck your toes. It's also called as a downward dog or mountain pose as well. And slowly just lift your hip up. You can actually bend your knees, separate your feet a little wider. And this is again, it just stretches your spine fully. You can stay here for five breaths or even up to 10 breaths, you can stay there. Again, here what happens is you have to observe that the spine is getting stretched fully. Because of the stretch in the spine, any kind of posture issues, what we have, it, it helps release out that posture issues. See, on the major thing, what I've seen among the fertility clients is that uh, because of the continuous um, uh, checkups and because of the continuous interventions of the, uh, uh, with the with the medical, they would have really got frustrated at some point of their time and uh, they would have felt really low certain times. And that is when the posture also changes. They would have literally started crunching their uh, upper part of the spine without their knowledge. Like whenever they sit on a chair or anywhere, literally they would be crunching like this. Without their knowledge, we would be doing this. And again, this is actually going to 
psychologically works on your mind to have that negative feelings. And this is something which has to be corrected. See, whatever work we might do, but we have to have that positive attitude. And the positive attitude and what we think is what we're going to get. And when we stretch out that spine, lengthen that spine, the posture improves, the shoulder goes back, you have the space to breathe, your chest opens up, and you feel really confident, bold, and to face any kind of challenges that you're going to face towards the journey of the motherhood. So again, that's a very important and a very nice relaxing pose to do it and also we have a few of the poses like uh, which is also called as the boon for the ma uh, women in yoga this is a baddha konasana so this is an indian cobbler's pose as most of you know be called as a butterfly pose as well again this as you observe it's a complete hip opener it helps to release out any kind of stress you have around the hip area actually it is told that it's also scientifically proven hip is to known to have that major space where it's going to hold all the emotional stress so that, that is one of the reason why hip area around the pelvis gets tighter as in when you're going to release out the tension around this pelvis around this hip area you emotionally whatever stress you have in your mind or, or or just thinking about something a longer time it helps to relax and release out gradually as your hip opens up deeper and deeper again here you can just stay here if you don't have to, there's no aim. See, there is nothing like aim in yoga. Like you have to touch the forehead to the floor. I have, I can't do all that. You don't have to think about such things that I can't do it. I can't deepen the pose. We'll give you the modifications accordingly. Just you have to keep your feet a little forward so that it gets easier on your inner thighs and groin and slightly bend. You can bend only so much like one, two degrees of angle. Absolutely fine. The main idea is you have to relax. You have to feel comfortable with yourself, with your body in the pose when you're staying in the pose. So that's the idea. Just place the palms. You can close your eyes, just flow with your breath, observe your breath and just relax and stay there. Again, this, this is also a pose which can be done anytime in a day, anytime, even after meals, it has been recommended to do it. It's very simple, very, very relaxing pose. But after meals, if you're doing, don't bend forward. You can just stay with your legs wider like this. Okay, and the next one, one more pose, which is the another one which is called as the boon for the women, is Upavishta Konas, and it's a wide leg forward fold. Again, here, again, here, this is this is again for your lower part of your body. It works, it works in opening up your hips, your inner thighs. See, one more thing, but we have to see in fertility is if there's a lot of tension around your pelvis and uh, there is no uh, movements happening around your pelvis because of your office work, you're sitting for long hours, there's a lot of stiffness which is holding around in the pelvis. And again, a lot of treatments are going around and your reproductive organs are not getting there enough for supply of nutrients because of that stiffness around it. That's very bad. Just because of stiffness, you're not reaching the positive. That's really one thing which we have to consider. So working on this hip openers, like if you can't stretch fully, that's absolutely fine. Just bend your knees, which can be done generally by everyone. So just bend your knees and then fold forward as much as possible. See here, even I'm again, not completely falling forward and I'm not asking you to do it completely. Just stay there where you're comfortable and breathe and stay there. Just staying here for a few of the for a few of the breaths. It helps to release out any kind of tension you have around your pelvis. It helps to relax completely fully. So this again, this is Upavishta Konasana. And apart from this, there are other many other drills around the hip area that we can work with, which I'm not showing you now. I'm just showing a few of the very traditional yoga poses which we do. But apart from this, there are also many, many, many other yoga drills that we do usually in the classes when I work with the fertility clients. And apart from that, as I told you before, I'll be showing you how to do work with a restorative practice. You will need is a bolster. You get this bolster. If you don't have a bolster, you can definitely go with a pillow. You can definitely go with the pillow. So on the days like when you're recommended by the doctor not to go with a very intense practice, but you want to relax your mind or on the days maybe when you don't have that energy to go with a deeper practice of a complete one hour of practice, but you want to relax your mind. In such cases is when you're going to use this uh, restorative yoga or in yoga. So you're going to just use a bolster, place it at your tailbone area and just relax and lie down on your back. Okay, And just lie down here. Eyes close and stay there for a few breaths. This is completely relaxing. As it opens up your shoulders, it releases any kind of tension in your upper body is relaxed fully and completely deep breathing happens here as your chest is completely opened. So this is again one of the very much restorative pose. And this can be variation, can we can do here one more. Matsyasana, a fish pose variation. Okay. So here we are going to place the bolster just behind the chest we're going to just place the bolster just behind the chest and slowly slowly place your head back down this is a fish pose matsyasana 
You can stay here by closing your eyes. It's a very restorative pose. You can also place a pillow behind your head if you feel it's too heavier to go lower. And just stay here for a few breaths. Like even five to 10 minutes, you can stay here. It's, it just try it. You find it really, really relaxing. And also many of the time, uh, most of the clients have issues like they can't sleep longer, very kind of disturbed sleep is the issues what they have. And by doing these kind of restorative poses, you will find wonders that you can sleep so soundless sleep you will have. Another one more restorative pose is a child's pose, which we can't miss in yoga. So you just use a bolster and then lie down in child's pose. Head down and stay there. These are very, very, very relaxing ones to release out any kind of tension in your mind and your body. Sunita, we are really enjoying yes. all of these poses. <laughs> we are having so much fun and so uh, so much knowledge being passed on by you. We really appreciate all that. But I'm just seeing the chat yeah. box and the question <laughs> answer sessions, you know, buzzing right now. And I just <laughs> more any of these. Uh, I'm happy to answer, Ekta. Ask me. Absolutely. We can discuss. Absolutely. Uh, so before I ask the questions, I just wanted to reiterate here. Number one is that infer infertility is on the rise among both men and women all around the world. Uh, lots of people, my friends, family members, you know, have been facing issues with it. And it's, um, you know, anxiety, depression, stress, uh, you know, they can significantly, there are significant reasons uh, that cause this infertility as well. And by doing yoga, we're hoping to work on these elements so that you are more able, you're free uh, to be able to conceive. Now, uh, for us, what we are looking at that we've got people from all around the world, from Pakistan, from Dubai, from India, from the US, so many people are coming in and they're asking us so many different questions. Um, first and foremost, the question, the myth is that fertility yoga is only for women. Sunita, how do we bust this myth? No, no. See, fertile, infertility can be either by men or women. Impotency is right for men only, right? It's addressed to men also. So no, it's not. See, we need both men and women to actively participate. So definitely it's both men and women has to participate in yoga as well to have that positive changes in their body and their mind. <laughs> oh, very good. So now we have a question from... Ezi Ladasi K, she's asking a question, is there a time limit for each yoga exercise? So she wants to know, how do you decide how much time should I spend on these exercises? And I know a lot of people are asking us out there saying that uh, would these yoga asanas be available? They will be available. The video will be available for you to view on our website on myvedicroots.com. Please do visit our website and we will uh, give you uh, the link in the chat boxes so that you can uh, click on this and get all the information you need. So the whole video will be available as well. So and um, we all just want to make sure that we have time enough time to to take on a lot of questions. So is there a time limit for each of these yoga exercises? Uh, see, we can't uh, say for everybody stay for five breaths or 10 breaths. See, we have to understand that each body types are different and we have to work accordingly. That's the reason we go with private sessions. See, after five breaths, if you feel any numbness in any of your leg or your hands, you have to slowly gently come out of the pose. But sometimes even after 10 breaths, you're feeling so comfortable, you don't feel like coming out of the pose. Please continue. There is no time limit. But after some time, definitely you, you have to come out. Maybe after a minute or one and a half minute, you can slowly come out of the pose. But restorative practice is what I showed. You can stay up to five to 10 minutes. It's absolutely Absolutely safe. You don't have to worry about it. Unless and until you're going numb with any of your body parts. And Sunita, this is one of the things I wanted to ask you as well. Mm -hmm. You know, when mm -hmm. you're pregnant, you everybody says, don't do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. You know, you just put your feet up and you <laughs> stick them up. Uh, and, you know, so everybody's asking the question is, is it okay to do it in the first trimester? Is it okay to do it in the second trimester or, you know, even in the third trimester? Uh, see, generally how we say is once the heartbeat of the baby is confirmed, you can start exercising. Until then, you can go with the gentle walks and the gentle exercises or stretches. But once the baby heartbeat is confirmed, you can start with a proper yoga practice. That should be fine. And throughout, till your labor, till the last day, yes, definitely you can practice. There's no stop in between. And do you know, Sunita, that everybody says you have to ask your doctor first. Is that correct? Like, Yes, they can ask. Yes. See, each person's individual pregnancies will be different. And we have to understand from the doctor's perspective also. So it's always right to ask your doctor consult and ask them what kind of uh, yoga practice can we do and then come back to us. It's really good. That's why, you know, we work with doctors collaborating with them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. 
So I'm bringing Dr. Rani in because, you know, we have everything. This platform provides you all the information you need to be able to conceive, to be stress free, to be able to have doctors and Ayurveda and Sunita all available to make your lives easier. Welcome, Dr. Rani. How are you today? Fine. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Hi, everyone, and good evening, all. Uh, welcome, Dr. Rani. You can hear me? Yes, yeah. Dr. Rani. Nice to see you all. So I would like to mention uh, Ekta that uh, Dr. Rani Krishna Kumari is a specialist obstetrician and gynecologist at Everest Medical Center in Dubai, and she's a very experienced gynecologist, and uh, she would be helping us, you know, answering some questions which are related to fertility. Thank you, Doctor, uh, Doctor, yeah. for joining us on a short note. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, doctor, everybody asks this that you know when you are working with uh, when somebody comes to you with issues regarding fertility. What is your advice to them that they can do in terms of well-being? What is your what do you, what advice do you give them? Yeah. Usually, we ask them to be stress relieved, to be stress free, by doing yoga and meditation, which is very important to balance the hormones and to strengthen the muscles of the pelvic pelvic region, and to support the uterus and ovaries, the hormones which are coming from the brain. So. We are advising them to see the yoga specialists available here to them. Thank you so much, Dr. Rani. So I just wanted to check. So there is a lot of apprehension among us, especially Indians, when you talk about, you know, I mean, me being an Indian, uh, there are, there are, that you shouldn't do too much because it can hurt the baby. But now you're saying that, you know, yoga is actually helpful uh, to help to conceive and also during pregnancy. And a lot of questions are coming about pregnancy that, you know, how far in your trimester, trimesters can you keep doing yoga? So and this, I think this session is uh, regarding fertility, I think so. This is before conception. Yes. And uh, when they are pregnancy also, early pregnancy, we cannot do vigorous exercises and all. Whatever comfortable poses they can do and continue. And pelvic muscle relaxants and all, uh, whichever exercises comfortable for them, who can do, can continue also, which helps in uh, smooth labor during delivery. Thank you so much, doctor. Thank you so much Most for welcome. that. Most welcome. I, I wanted to go back to Sunita. Sunita, uh, yeah. I just I wanted to pick up on the conversation we had before that we do not recommend people take on these exercises on their own. Is that correct? Like, we, it's better for them to work with a practitioner to avoid injuries? Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. See, first of all, no, we need to know what kind of issues they're going through and their body types we need to analyze. And based on that, we give them modifications. And it's better to choose the modifications when you're working with uh, related to fertility issues. So it's better to work with a practitioner, with a certified trained practitioner. Okay. Um, Japneet, we have lots of questions of people asking us where we can consult Dr. Rani as well. So I'm going to give them information about... Uh, Sunita and uh, her classes, but please do help uh, everyone with giving them information about your clinic and your clinic details and how they can connect with uh, Dr. Rani. Um, I think there are a lot of medical questions coming in terms of, you know, uh, what can we do to increase the endometrial lining, uh, you know, how we can access, uh, and I know Kinjal, uh, then we have Gautami, we have Akhila, there's so many questions coming regarding yoga. Uh, I just wanted to check with you that um, is there uh, any one advice that you, when you see your, uh, you know, when you see the your participants, Sunita, what advice do you give them when they come to you with uh, the issue about fertility? The first thing is I ask them to maintain their posture. That gives them the lot of confidence. Mind and body gets relaxed once the posture is made. That's a simple thing everybody can do, men, women, anybody. All of us can do it. So maintain your posture. That is the first thing. And check on your breathing. Are you a reverse breather? Are you breathing right? The simple thing I'll say for everyone, when you're inhaling, see if your abdomen is getting bigger or it's moving inwards. Just imagine like a balloon. You're blowing the air inside the balloon. The it, balloon gets bigger, right? The similar way, when you're blowing, you're taking the air in, your abdomen has to get bigger. bigger. And you're taking your air out, abdomen has to go inwards. But observe, if you are under stress or anxiety, you will be a reverse breather. So I'll ask them to start correcting from the basic level. So start consciousness, awareness with your own body first. So correct your breathing, correct your posture. Most of the things will fall in place after that. Yoga is next after these two. 
So I start from the basic. Whenever I work with a practitioner, I always start with the basic level so that it has to be corrected in all the levels, right? It's, we can't just ask them to start doing with any of the yoga poses. That's the reason I don't recommend them to do it unless until they work with me personally as a uh, private consultant. A lot of people are talking about fallopian tube blockages. Now, this is uh, something that is also a reason why, you know, they're not able to conceive and just wanting to know how uh, yoga can support uh, that particular problem. Uh, see, generally we can do the move, uh, generally we can do the asana, which is going to massage your reproductive organs by including a lot of twists and the back bends. But beyond that, it's something which we have to take the doctor's help and the advice based on this topic. But we can definitely work coordinating with the doctor. That will help help gradually. Um, we have a pro we have people joining us from Bangladesh, from Nigeria, from you know uh, Pakistan. I'm just so honored that uh, people are connecting with us and trying to find solutions. Uh, there are a lot of people that are asking us what to do to do with endometrium. You know, so how do you thicken the endometrium um, as well? So. Dr. Rani's, all these issues are medical issues. Is that correct? And I think what we are trying to reiterate that yoga is part of the solution, not the entire solution. We are here as an alternate therapy to help you, um, you know, be relaxed, uh, be stress-free, which is one of the main reasons why people are unable to conceive. Correct, correct, I completely agree with you. And uh, what do you uh, see, uh, Sunita, when women come to you or men come to you saying we are facing these issues. How long are they practicing yoga when they start to see a difference in their attitude? Uh, at least personally, when they practice with me, I make sure they feel some difference within, at least with 10 to 15 sessions with me, definitely they'll find a difference. One is the sleep. Most of them would not be getting sleep. One, the people who are dealing with fertility issues. I make sure first they're going to get the soundless sleep because the hormones just regulate it, just balances on its own once you sleep. Another one is the breathing. And I start with a very, very basic posture. I and I try to connect their mind and body first. And also try to connect their pelvic muscles along with their breath. And along with that, I start with the yoga asanas. So 15 sessions, 10 to 15 sessions, they're definitely going to feel a lot of difference in fact. No, so I would request our team to post all the links for all these uh, group as well as for the one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with Sunita. If you're interested, you can have a consultation with her. And you're also here, we are also here with our medical team, with Dr. Rani, as well as the Zivanza team. So if you are looking for consultations, please check the chat boxes. We will be putting a lot of information up there. And please do visit our websites. It's really, really important that you get the right information. Uh, we're going to make sure that every query of you is answered in the best way possible. So I'm just going to take more questions because these questions are just adding on and on. Uh, so yeah. we're talking about um, pelvic pain. So how do we deal with pelvic pain uh, through yoga? It is possible. This is 100% curable by yoga. Pelvic pain is something which I've been very closely dealt with the uh, clients. Uh, one is this, uh, usually pelvic pain comes around the fertility time when they have uh, miscarriages or uh, even during pregnancy also pelvic pain is a little common and that can be dealt with yoga. Nothing to worry. They can consult me for that. I will tell them in detail. Uh, there is one question that's come for Dr. Rani. Uh, and this is an anonymous uh, attendee. So can a woman trying to conceive practice yoga in the uh, secretary phase of men menstrual cycle? Will it not affect implantation? No, they can practice safely. No problem. There you go. You've got your answer. Um, the Another question I have for Sunita is, Sunita, can you please suggest, this is from Pujashri, uh, that what can they do yoga practice for asthma patients who want to conceive? This there is a cure for this. Generally, I just showed Matsyasana, right? One of the restorative poses. This can be done to release out the tension. Basic idea is we have to open up the shoulders and chest, the thoracic spine. By opening the shoulders and chest, the asthma issues will slowly, slowly release us out. It just relaxes. Other one is the breathing practice. A lot of breathing, breath work has to be done with the clients. And that should not be an issue. We can uh, sort that out. Oh, a lot of people are asking about fees. Um, Indu Balakrishna, thank you so much for joining us, but the fees will be available for you based on your requirements. So I think what we suggest that you connect with us 
uh, through one of our links that we are sharing and we would be more than happy to understand your needs and come back to you with a package. Um, I think a lot of people are asking questions in the chat box, so I'm going to miss those questions if you are going to keep putting questions in the chat box, unfortunately, because I'm going uh, first making sure that we answer all the questions in the, uh, in, in the question and answer session. Uh, one question is uh, for Dr. Rani. Dr. Rani, how can we improve the population? And I know, Sunita, you have a yogic answer, yoga answer as well for that. So, Dr. Rani, do you want to talk about that? Ovulation or yoga? Which one? <laughs> How can we improve the ovulation? Yeah, for everything, yoga when they are doing that exercises which increases the blood circulation to the pelvic uh, organs, especially uterus and the ovaries, uh, which strengthens the ovulation also and the endometrial lining also. Somebody is asking for the endometrial lining. When circulation is uh, good with uh, oxygenated blood, so it is good for conception and it helps in bringing a good baby also. And implantation will be very good. My answer is that. Still, if they want anything, they can question. Thank you, Dr. Rani. Sunita, do you, do you have an answer for this? Yes, yes, yes. See, there is a lot of oxygenated blood that has to be supplied towards your pelvic region. And that is something which just stops moving toward the pelvic region or good quality of the oxygenated blood when we are stressed out. As I explained, right, hip is a main portion where it just holds all the emotional stress. That is the reason hip gets more stiffer and stiffer as in when our anxiety levels are increasing. And by releasing out, by doing a lot and lot of hip openers and uh, just deep stretches, your mind will be relaxed because your hip muscles just opens up. And a very good functionality, like uh, good, reg it regulates the ovaries as well as the uterus. It helps with the good functionality of the ovaries and the uterus. So it should be fine. We can actually fix that. That pe a lot of people are asking, uh, Dr. Rani and Sunita, both of you, we can pick up on this question, PCOD. A lot of people are asking the same question about PCOD and yoga, PCOD and fertility. So, um, Sunita, first I'll go to you. So, can, it, <laughs> what do you say to your your uh, you know clients when they come to you asking you that how do I okay. solve it? For, for first of all, with me, myself, I was detected PCOD in 2016. Okay. And uh, I've also gone through a laparoscopic surgery by having the dermoid cyst in my ovary. This was in 2016. And I could complete, I had a surgery. And after that, my gynecologist says, just do some physical activity. She didn't suggest yoga, just do some physical activity. Because I, as you told, right, I was a software developer. I was just sitting on a chair, 10 hours, 12 hours to sit and work. And that is when I just took up yoga. I just started for my own health. It became a passion. And that's now I became a teacher now, like teaching like so many people. At least as per my knowledge, about, along with the doctor's work, with the treatment, like medicinal treatment, if you're doing yoga, 100% can get rid of PCOS. And not just with me, I've also seen it at uh, this benefit, same benefit with my friends and with my family members as well. PCOD problem, it can be resolved. Don't think it's a big thing. Don't think any issue is a big thing. We can sort it out, but have that patience and trust the journey. How long? I think people are fixated with time a little bit. And I am as well. I, you know, I want to know, I'm, I lead a very busy life, um, Sunita. So how is how much time do I need to take out for, uh, you know, when I think about, okay, I'd like to conceive. And how much time do I need to take out to be able to do these uh, yoga sessions properly? See, at least as a beginner, when you're learning, at least go for three to four sessions in a week at least, or else your body will not remember. The muscles will just forget because just doing one hour in a day and the rest of the work, you're just lost with your work and you ask the muscles to remember, it's absolutely not possible. Even if you're doing for just half an hour a day, I ask you to go with more number of days than just doing for two hours in a week and then stopping off. Don't do that. That consistency matters. A lot of consistency work will actually help to relax yourself better than just doing one hardcore practice and stopping it. That doesn't, the shortcuts doesn't work at all. It doesn't sustain longer. Then I'm so, I've been so much happier since I've started working out with you yes. uh, and practicing yoga with you on Zoom. And I'm so thankful to this technology that it allows me to do so because I tried so many different avenues in California itself. But I think people have taken their own version of yoga and calling it yoga, but it's their own version of something, exercise. <laughs> and I, just want to, I want to find something so authentic that I reached out to you because I know you you follow all the principles of the Vedic uh, philosophy. Uh, so I'm really, really keen to see that, uh, you know, that we are through Zoom, we are able to be in everybody's homes now. And this expertise, this um, 
information can be made available. Okay. So, uh, Rani, I just wanted to, uh, before we carry on with our session, I just wanted to thank you, you being a doctor, for making the time to come to our session today and to uh, help our participants. Uh, there are so many participants have sent us email. I'm going to request all of them to connect with us through our Google form. Once they connect with us, they can get Dr. Rani's uh, individual consultation. We will make that happen for you. So please do connect with us. And see, this is the beauty of being online on Zoom. Everything is closer to you than you think. You can get all this expertise right at your fingertips. All you need to do is type in your details and we will be in touch with you. So Sunita, tell me what, how do, now a lot of people would be saying, this is all great. We love Sunita. She, we, she knows what she's talking about. Uh, you know, we want to sign up now. So what happens when I sign up? So they send me the, the details. I connect them to you. How do you start the process? First is a consultation. Like I have to talk to them. I need to know them. I need to know their history. I need to know their background, their medical background or their, or their issues, what they're going through. I need to understand them one-to-one. -one. Only then I can prepare a class plan for them, which is going to be beneficial for their physically and mentally. See, for each and every person, the class plans are different. What I give for A, person A, I can't do the same for person B. It makes no sense. It has to be customized as per their body type, their their whatever the physical activity they're doing in your day and many other things, health conditions and so many things. First is a consultation. I talk to them first. Okay, so once the consultation is done, then uh, they have the option to um, join either the group class or would you suggest a private class for people who have not yet conceived? So where do they start? See, if they have been practicing yoga before, like uh, maybe like before they're practicing yoga or if, if they're comfortable in a group class, I would not say no, definitely you can go to a group class. But if you're completely new to yoga and you are working and you want to work on specific health issues like conceiving, no, that is when I say, please come to the private sessions where we can interact in group sessions. I can't interact only with you. I have another few more people and I have to give import, equal importance to everyone. That's how it works. So there is an option if you, you can join the group session as well in the beginning. Yes. But however, if you're looking for a specific solution to a problem, it is recommended that you come for the one-on-one -on -one sessions. Yes. And we have kept those rates very, very low. You will not find those rates in your own countries. I mean, I'm talking about America, for example. I look around, I spend what I'm giving you for personal training. Sunita so is actually what I pay for group, more than that I pay for the group training in the US. So I think this is a fantastic supportive network that we've created that everybody can benefit from. Um, Sunita, so how much, like you said that you, there will be a difference in, 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 in you in, in a few weeks time, you'll be able to see it. What do you think in terms of me to be fully, you know, to, to, to get the full benefit out of this practice, how long should I be in the system? Do you recommend like to follow it for a year or two years or, you know, and of course it becomes a habit then. Yes, yes, yes. See, that is the idea, right? See, you'll just get addicted to the yoga practice and you feel like every day is new. That is the best part of yoga, right? It's not like, okay, you go to a gym every day, okay, you start running and you do start lifting weights. It's not like every day. It's a different practice. That's the reason my class plans will be different. It'll be different, unique every day. I will not repeat the class plans because I don't want get want the clients to get bored of it. And if you enjoy the practice, and every day you will be deepening and advancing the poses, so you'll not be repeating what you're doing the same thing again and again. Though the fundamentals remain the same, but the approaches are different. That's how we work. So there's no time limit. Ekta. It's like you know. It's like, it's your lifetime. It's like a lifetime you're giving to yoga, but at every stage you're benefited. So that makes a difference. But what I like about you, Sunita, is in your session, which I mean, I can compare because I've been to so many different practitioners, is your one-to-one -one feedback. You're always, you know, asking me, okay, can you stay back after the class? You know, maybe let's work on this more. You ask me about how I'm doing. And I think that really helps me calm down. And I know that somebody is looking at me and finding out, you know, what I can do to improve myself. Uh, so this is, I think that's the best part about the class, not just your expertise, but also your, your engagement. That's, that's very important. Ekta. We need to have that one-to-one -one contact. And I, I believe a lot in right alignments. It's not about just doing the yoga and then walking down. Even if you're doing two, three poses in a day, you have to do with the right alignment, right way. When you have to inhale, you have to inhale. When you have to exhale, you have to do exhale. Only then you're going to get the maximum benefit. You can't do it like in a very materialistic way. Okay, okay I'm just going to lift weights. I'm going to pull anything. I'm just walking out. It can't work like that. It has to be work with your mind and your body coordinating together with the breath. So that's the reason I make sure that I connect with everyone 
after the class as well. This, especially in the group class, I connect with everyone after the class and ask them to stay back. <laughs> And you make it very healthy competition as well. So we feel, you know, that we need to push ourselves a little bit more, a little bit more. So I really enjoy that class. And I hope that I can see some of the participants that have joined us today can come trial our class, see how we do it, things and how we're different. And you can be part of this global community. Correct. Uh, Correct. This is absolutely what we are hoping from everyone. Just click on that link. Those links are available in the chat function. Come to us with your questions and we will help you, whether it's IVF, whether it's helping with PCOD, whether it's helping with stress levels, uh, we have the answers for you. You just need to reach out to us. Uh, so Sunita, I think with that, we are reaching to the end of our time. Uh, I just wanted to uh, check with you if you have any parting thoughts for our uh, people, for all these lovely people who have joined us from all around the world. First is stay confident. Never lose your confidence. Don't lose your trust. Stay healthy and always and make sure you have that positive hope, that positive attitude and do yoga. Don't do anything with the doubt. Nothing will uh, give the positive success. Just ha do with the uh, hope that, you, that definitely you will have that smile after you join the classes. Just start with the classes and we will have a long journey throughout together once you are in my community. <laughs> once you enter, I'm sure you will not go back. <laughs> that I can assure <laughs> Thank you, Sunita, for those okay. uh, lovely parting thoughts. And, you know, you wouldn't believe how many 300 people joined us from all around the world. I think we are so blessed and privileged, you know, to have their time uh, and be able to be of any help. Everybody's asking me, Ekta, where is the video? We want to watch the video, but we are not <laughs> yet, and they already want to watch the video. I just want to confirm this uh, video will be on our Facebook uh, page on My Vedic Roots. It will also be on Zivanza's network. All the information will be made available to you and is made available to you in the chat function. From my point of view, I just want to thank Dr. Rani, Dr. Sunita, uh, Dr. Rani, Sunita, as well as the team of uh, Zivanza. They have helped us tremendously. They're great partners, medical science and um, Vedic philosophy goes hand in hand in the modern world. Overall, Yoga is going to improve your chances of getting pregnant, whether you're a man or a woman. We, we know that it stimulates the ovaries and the uterus for women. For men and women, it reduces the stress and anxiety. It balances your hormone levels. It increases your blood flow and your circulation to different body parts. Um, it also strengthens our muscles and stimulates our hormone system as well and it supports a very healthy immune system. So you have nothing to lose with yoga as long as you're doing it with the right practitioner and doing it the right way. So come join us, be part of our community, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much, everyone. And with that, I call for a close of the meeting.